Right, today's video is just obviously going to be on the boat again. Now, it's only going to be a short one because it was we were super busy and I didn't really have a lot of time to go into technical stuff on what we were doing on the boat. But you're, there, I did film some of it, uh, so to give you a general idea of what was happening now. To start off with, when we started on the boat, when we got the when I first bought the boat, we brought it back up here and I opened up the keel and water came out of that keel. So I thought there's water inside. How did it get in there? Is it a build up of condensation or has it been leaking? I came to the conclusion that it was probably leaking through the screw because of the keel band. That's why we're replacing the keel band because of the damage on the keel band. Now I put left it fill up with a lot of rainwater on the top of the deck to see if that water would go back into the keel once I'd emptied it. Well anyway it didn't, so I knew the decks were sealed. So that's why I came to the conclusion it was obviously the screw. Anyway, when we went to take the keel band off, we took it all off, and then we'd seen underneath where there was two screws that were holding the keel band and another one back here, and they had a little crack here, here, and here in the fibre. Only small little cracks. And what I believe has happened is the boat has either come in either on a slipway or possibly on the beach, and as it came in, the boat turned. This can happen quite often, you've probably found it if you're ever coming in on a dinghy. Suddenly a wave catches it and it turns and the boat comes in kind of sideways or if you're messing around trying to turn the boat around to put people on that kind of thing and I reckon it came in sideways and clouted the top of a stone or a rock on the keel band. Now being the keel band is metal, the shock went through the metal, through the screw and caused it to stretch it that way and this is what caused the little splits above the top of the screws. Now. We've put plastic keel band on, and of course, plastic keel is a bit different because the shock just when it hits it, it's more like a bumper with that plastic. It's not a huge amount of bumper, but it would absorb more shock than a piece of steel which hits the metal. And like I said, the shock then went through the screws, and of course, the screw gaps were quite far apart on the metal keel band. So you've got you've got one screw every sort of three, well, three screws every sort of three foot. It's not. A great deal that's quite a lot of force that can go through screws coming through the metal keel so anyway we decided to um, we stripped off all the keel band obviously and we decided to do a full job on the these little splits not just to like glue them back we epoxied them we cleaned them all out epoxied where the crack was and into it we then layered fiberglass on the outside of that resined all that up and we actually went right around the keel band we didn't just patch it we put it right round and then we gel coated it right round as well but we kept it to one layer because obviously we didn't want any bulging out all this way when we put the keel band on and then we put sealant all the way on the keel band then screwed the keel band up and the gaps are like seven inches between the screws on the keel band so I've got more screws per band than than the steel one so hopefully now it is fully repaired but it did take a lot longer I mean what was probably would have taken us a day took us sort of two days to do because we wanted to get a proper job done not quite finished I'll, I'll explain at the end of the video there's something else I want to do just to finish it off and just reinforce it even more because you can never be too safe when you're on the water anyway like I say this is just an update a little quick flick through of what's been going on so here it comes right so we've just blocked the back of the boat up there We've pulled off the trailer a little bit, put that on there, and we're just about, well, we've just started to lift, screw down the jockey wheel, which will raise the boat off the trailer. Then we're gonna to need to put some blocks either side on these parts, on the side bits, and then pull the trailer out. And then we can get to work on the keel band. Well, you notice we've also, well, I don't know if you can see that, but we've actually cut the keel band away at the back part. It pretty much broke off, unscrewed it, so we don't have any problem with screws in it afterwards. And when we're, fitting it we can just lift that slide it through into position and lower it again Right, so as you see there, we don't need to take the trailer out actually because we're going to put the keel band on like that if we can get onto it. I think we can. Boat's listed a bit, so we've got room if we can get the screws in. And 
then we'll lower it back on the keel because the keel band is going to be in two parts anyway so we don't need to have the whole boat off we just need to raise the back like this get that piece on and then lower it back down on the back raise the front put the front piece on job done we don't have to mess around taking the trailer all the way off and just pull the boat back on the trailer good to go well that's the plan anyway well there's the old keel band not much left of it it was breaking in places when it came off but we just literally popped it out now we'll seal up the holes but we're gonna let the water drain because there's water inside that keel part Well, what we've been doing, I'll try and explain it, is under here you'll see we've put fiberglass here. Now, just about there, where the screw hole was, and the same up there and the next one down, the, the boat pro has taken a blow on the metal keel band, I believe, and the screw split the fiberglass here. And in those three points, it was split a little bit and there was water inside the boat now the water wasn't coming out really more than that but it's obviously been got in there under pressure when the boat was in the water forced through those cracks so needed to address that obviously and like i say i don't think it's like a like a major leak or anything like that it's just been seeping through them but they needed to be sorted out obviously to uh you don't want to leave things like that while the keel band's off so we get all that done any nicks chips anything like that were being sorted out as well along there and um yeah hopefully the job will be good the thing is that's the thing with the plastic keel band if you hit anything with it it does have a certain amount of like shock absorbing a bit like a bumper whereas the steel the shock goes straight through and it it proves it on here that the shock has gone through that band and split the holes on three of those screws so there you go Anyway, should be sorted out soon. Like, so we're going to leave this set off now properly till overnight, and then tomorrow we're going to come back and we're going to go along all the screw holes from the old keel band because that's all been taken off and clean up any any. There's still a bit of sealant here where the old keel band was. Take away that, sand it up, fill those holes up, let them dry out completely. Make sure there's no moisture in them. Gel coat that. Then we'll leave it another at least 24 hours and then the keel band will be put on screwed in and the sealant between the keel band and the boat and then it should be as good as new I'd say they've done it once, the keel band. Important bit's going to be getting it over that. The damage bit. Particularly, just to be certain. I'm going to try thick on this one. If it doesn't even run off. It'd be good for you though when you start, if you do any filming on your boat and stuff. Mm. More protection, mm -hmm. more waterproofing, that kind of thing. And any on the trailer, it'll just protect the trailer anyway. Yeah, that's it. Stop it rusting. Just have to check it afterwards if there's any dripping effect. Get rid of those before they go on. There's a chip there as well, I'll get into there.
trouble is we couldn't put too many layers on here because we don't want it to no. hold you out. Right, well, that's the gel coating on the fiberglass done. And I've just sealed the screw holes up, so now we've got to wait again, another 24 hours, at least, before we do any more. It might be today, tomorrow or the next day, we'll put the keel band on. Right, so now the keel has been prepped, repaired and all the rest of it, we're going to be putting the keel band on. We've just shaped the, the keel band to fit around there, we'll tighten it up in a minute. And we're going to put sealant along the bottom and screw it up all the way and then we'll drop it back on the trailer and do the front. Little Robin's joined us, just down there. Don't know if you can see him. No more than about four feet. He's got himself a little worm, I think, that popped up out the ground. <laughs> right, got to get back to it. But, as you can see, it's coming along. We've done this, I'm going to go along with sealant along the edges as well. And uh, just finish it off. You can see that side is now banded on as well, and the repairs should all get painted over with black anti pal so it'll all match in. So there we go, we've got it on. It's a bit patchy at the moment, I'm going to go over it once it's all dried off and that. Um, so I've put silicon, well not silicon, it's uh, sealant for, for the keel band, all the way down. It's underneath so it sticks on, it's screwed on. We managed to go Really, really quickly actually, we got the, most of the band on within about 30 minutes I reckon. Then we end up with two screws which gave us an absolute nightmare to get in. Because of the, where the trailer was and trying to get the angle lifting and moving and that. It probably took us an hour to do those two screws and we got one in. And then it sheared, as it was, as it was halfway in it sheared. Fortunately it sheared below the band. So I was able to re-drill near it and put another screw in instead. But um, yeah, I mean, apart from that, it went as smooth as butter until we got to those last two screws. But anyway, it's on now. You'll see it's got like see the sealant here. It looks a bit messy at the moment, but once it's all cleaned up and that, I'm going to um, let it all go off now. And uh, yeah, we'll be back on it again. We're going to be black anti-fouling like the original that was on here. I'm just going to sort all this out. And uh, that's the keel band done. Well, as you can see, the boat is at a funny angle at the moment. What I've been doing is I've been flushing the keel out with water, getting as clean as possible inside, and it's tilted like that at the back to drop the water out the back. And it's taken quite a long time actually, but I'm trying to get as clean as possible inside because what we're going to do is, although we've sealed the keel where we had that little cracking on the near the screw. Uh, we've given it epoxy, we've fiberglassed over, we've gel coated over, it's got the new keel band protecting that area again with all the sealant layered in between so it's got a layer of sealant as well. We're going to do one more thing and uh, it's taken a bit of time to do 
but it'll be worth it is we're going to run a small amount of resin once it's all cleaned and dried out down into the keel from above that resin will find its way along and find any little areas where there's any old screw holes any fine cracking from that where they crack around the screw area and it'll bond around the screws so I've made the screws are obviously longer so they stick through into the keel it'll bond around that lot and just as an added extra might be over the top but you can never be too safe with it so that's what we're doing it's just taking time to well it's taken quite a while to clean it out now I've got the process of we're drying it and it's it's not like just drying it it's going to take several days to dry it out of there using compressed air hair dryers heaters you name it it's it's all going in to get it as dry as possible then we'll run a pipe up with a hoover and hoover any remaining bits although by now there shouldn't be anything in there and uh, yeah we'll be good to go on that side then we'll be moving on to probably doing the winch uh, you'll see that in here I've been patching up these areas here and filling them up so they're almost done they'll just get a coat of paint and there'll actually be a mat over the top of that anyway so that'll be the yeah the next job will probably be the the winch and figuring out fuel tanks that kind of thing but we are getting there we are absolutely cracking on at full speed at the moment well the weather's been nice before it breaks down again <laughs> 